Goff on his way. Gary is the Aston Villa in England centre forward. A special treat for Gary, as it's the last time he'll be this close to a Premiership footballer for several years. <laughs> Dion Dublin. With David and Jonathan is one of the stars of the royal family, so he'll feel at home, surrounded by a bearded fat slob, a lazy good for nothing, <laughs> and a doddery old grandmother. Ralph Little. We open the show with Sporting Bluff, where the teams decide who on the other side is speaking the truth and who is about as trustworthy as an Alex Ferguson smile. Gary, Rory and Dion, your question involves a link between the film Hannibal and these three fine footballers. McAllister. Oh, McAllister has scored a fantastic goal! Jochen, Dublin to his right. Jochen getting the ball stuck beneath his feet, but he's a burst with it! arriving, here's Roy Keane, it's four. The film Hannibal features Liverpool midfielder Gary McAllister. The film Hannibal features Aston Villa striker Julian Joachim. <laughs> the film Hannibal features Man United hard man Roy Keane. OK, so which is it, Gary's team? I don't talk about Gary McAllister, because he plays at Liverpool. Yeah, mm. they beat your team. Arsenal. But I have to say, we were robbed. Well, you 30,000 scouts in one place. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> question Dion's team spirit, but is there any chance we could just look at that again, just to test um, his reaction to <laughs> his teammate's goal? If you look at the bottom right of the picture, you'll see Dion. Looks a shade disappointed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why don't you be disappointed? He's one behind me now, mate. I've got nine goals, he's got eight. <laughs> and I can't see Roy Key being in a film because he'd have to take a, uh, a wage cut, wouldn't he? That's true. <laughs> I, can, I can just no. imagine it. Said, I'm not working with that psychopath, says Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did a film of Gary's um, football career in Japan, nine and a half weeks. <laughs> and you were in that sex film, weren't you? Ears wide shut. <laughs> <laughs> Much better than the movie that Rory was in. <laughs> sheepy, sheepy, bang, bang. <laughs> okay, let's do everybody. Or oh, it could be uh, what women don't want. <laughs> <laughs> I think the answer yeah. would be Julian Jochen. This is just uh, something I've been told. I think Julian Jochen was in the, in, in the back of one of the scenes behind Hannibal on a TV screen. Okay, so you think David was telling the truth. Let's see if you're right. <laughs> Three points. Yeah, three points. David did indeed tell the truth. Bizarrely, Joe Chim appears scoring a goal for Aston Villa on TV in a Florence police station. Critics said that many aspects of the plot of Hannibal were scarcely believable. Aston Villa in Europe, for instance. <laughs> Anthony Hopkins now says he's unlikely to play the part of Hannibal Lecter for a third time. But where else will they find someone whose face instantly inspires that much fear and terror? <laughs> no, that's better. McAllister has taken a lot of stick in the press this week after photos were published of him in his younger days. <laughs> I mean, have you ever seen anyone looking as ridiculous as that? David, Jonathan and Ralph, it's the winner of Snooker's recent Benson and Hedges Masters, Paul Hunter, for you. In the final, Hunter started out playing dismally and was 6-2 down at the break. But after that, he staged a remarkable comeback to win 10-9 in front of a huge TV audience. Yeah! 
So, what happened during that two and a half hour break to turn Hunter into a world beater, Gary's team? Paul Hunter went back to his hotel to be hypnotised by Paul McKenna. Paul Hunter went back to his hotel and played a Steve Davis <laughs> motivational tape. <laughs> can there be such a thing? Well, it can't be that one then, Gary, can it? <laughs> <laughs> Touch. <laughs> Quite fallen. Paul, <laughs> Paul Hunter went back to his hotel and ravished his girlfriend. So, did Paul Hunter get hypnotised, listen to the wise words of Steve Davis, or pleasure his girlfriend? David's team. We should commiserate, actually, before we start with, with mm. Roy, because it was a sad loss for your team at the weekend, and I do feel bad for you that you lost. So we should give a big R for mm. Roy, I think, everybody. Yeah. Oh. Oh. And also, Roy, you know, yeah. to see football, <laughs> to, see, to see the match at the new home of uh, British football, um, ITV was quite nice as well. <laughs> so, so commiserations to Gary, because you're going to be out of work now. And, uh, and big commiserations to your wife, because I know Mrs L liked you out of the house on a Saturday night. <laughs> and of course, Steve Ryder knocks off at six o'clock, if you know what I mean. So, uh, <laughs> but, um, Rory said the word ravished. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and Nick said the word pleasured. Which isn't necessarily, in I'm sure Rory's experience, the same thing. No. <laughs> Do I know you? <laughs> I like to hear, like hear Jonathan say ravished. Who are we? <laughs> That's the one I can't get. Ravished is a piece of piss. <laughs> say, is Rory that what it costs ravished now? a Ferrari. <laughs> Rory ravished a red Ferrari. <laughs> Hypnosis. I think Rafe is under hypno hypnosis at the moment. He Who? thinks he's on TV. <laughs> but in actual fact, he's in double maths. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a big boy behind him writing Gaylord on his shirt. <laughs> but it's nice to have someone younger on the show. Mm. You must be looking forward to voting for the first time. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> Do you remember your first That's vote? That's true. Yeah. Remember the first time you voted? That <laughs> Disraeli was one no, hell of a leader, wasn't it? <laughs> Do you think the world of snooker and sex are linked anyway? Is, uh, is, uh, is sort of snooker a sexy sport? Depends if you miss the pink Always. and pop the brown. <laughs> <laughs> you're always talking about sex, you. I'm obsessed you know, by what, it. What was it you were asking us in the green room earlier? I was asking, when was the last time anyone... No, don't do that. <laughs> I know, don't we? I wanted to know, and not everyone answered. I wasn't there. He well, pretended he didn't even hear it. <laughs> no, no, he didn't hear it. I have to say, I, I'm, I'm quickly, sorry, love. I have to say, I quickly walked out for coffee so as not to have to answer. It wasn't a coffee you went out for, young man. <laughs> Come on, then, let's have an answer. It's probably Wait. the shagging. It's got to be sex. So you think that Rory was yeah. telling the truth? Let's see if you're correct. Yeah. When Ronnie O'Sullivan won the World Championship last week, his jailbird dad was confined to his prison cell and had to follow the action through signals from other inmates. A finger click meant his son was at the table. A tap meant Higgins was potting. And a high-pitched yelp meant Ronnie Biggs was getting the traditional welcome back in the showers. <laughs> According to the News of the World, Steve Davis once took a girl fan back to his hotel for a six-hour sex session. That's one hour of sex and five hours walking around the bed, lining up his shot. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. introduce a brand new round now it's called lip reading all about the heated words sportsmen exchange during unguarded moments david's team here's a typically friendly mass punch-up between chelsea and arsenal started by chelsea's dennis wise who cunningly walks away before the fight actually kicks off <laughs> <laughs> now, we've asked a lip-reading expert to tell us what Dennis Wise was saying there, but first of all, David's team, what do you think went on? Hmm. I think he said, 
You take that back, Frenchie. I'm telling you that one day he will be as good as Barry Norman. <laughs> well, French, of course, is the language of love, traditionally, not the language of anger and violence. And oh, Gary, going, I think you could uh, do well learning some of that lingo. Because I know, because Mrs. L has told me sometimes that they... <laughs> She said that sometimes you're at home, you're cutting up together a nice evening in and you've got the piat door chilling nicely in the fridge and <laughs> you're just digesting some of Bernard Matthews' finest cuisine and maybe, maybe you're watching the closing dramatic scenes of Titanic and Michelle has a hanky out to wipe the little tears away from your cheeks and then <laughs> you lean over and romantically say in your lovely Leicester accent, fancy having it off, love. And that's what, <laughs> we don't. And what you want to do, you want to say to Je t'adore. Je t'aime. Veux-tu regarder un trois mon ménage à toi avec Jonathan Ross? And then... You'll be speaking! They're the words she's waiting to hear, my friend. Ménage à toi. Hey! Hey! You see? He doesn't know what it means. It's just a new crisp flavour he's got to sell. <laughs> Was, I think the French there were claiming that they could score a goal from a free kick. And Dennis Wise was kindly pointing out, you can't, you can't, you French can't. <laughs> uh, give me one nice. other bad word he used. Um, I asked Rory if it was the C word and he said, what, Chelsea? <laughs> <laughs> Bastard. I'll give you three points for oh, that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well done. Very good. Thank you. Inspiration. Inspiration. <laughs> According to our expert, Wise said about Vieira, he's such a twat, you f***ing arse, Pires, you f***ing way off, f***ing off, loser, you f***ing bastard, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> to which Claudio Ranieri replied, it's half past four. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, Dennis Wise's four-month-old son became the first child to ascend the Wembley steps with the team. The little chap toddled up in his tiny Chelsea kit, watched by his adoring proud son. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's team, all those hours spent watching foreign films without subtitles, should help you with this one. It's Eric Cantona causing two journalists to walk out of a French football programme. Qui représente dans les médias et qui sont aussi et qui sont aussi non mais c'est pas c'est Eric ce sont des journalistes qui posent des questions et on ne pas que mon image apparaisse de Jacques on peut pas toujours être bien écouté les uns et les autres ont le droit au revoir monsieur ont le droit au revoir monsieur ont le droit de donner leur non messieurs je vous en prie ça m'étonne pas messieurs je vous en prie non Christian Olivier et Patrick Urbini ciao what is it that Eric said that caused the two journalists to walk out, Gary's team? I want a menage a trois with Jonathan Ross. <laughs> yes, Gary, but could you answer the question? <laughs> Please, quoting Molière, I think he says, uh, J'ai conçu par la race humaine une haine incroyable, c'est qu'ils ont la fin d'en l'âge, je n'ai pas. Yeah, what does it translate as? <laughs> Let's get on with the show. It oh, translates no, it, it uh, translates as uh, where's yeah. Spot? Spot's in the room. Yeah. <laughs> is Spot behind the door? Let's see. <laughs> no, Spot isn't there. That's what it translates as. I do speak um, I do speak fluent French, but unfortunately Kant and I were speaking fluent bollocks there. <laughs> <laughs> so I need a translator. Is Chris Eubank still here? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just hear at the beginning him saying, uh, uh, je vais uh, pisser sur toi or something, pisser sur vous, I'm going to piss all over you. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, I'll give you three points for that, that's, that's, that's enough of the good, mate. Yeah, Well, the full quote is, the English press were able to recognise my talent by voting me the best player in England, but the French press, who had labelled me indefensible, made no mention of that. Look at these small fry, I could piss on them. <laughs> it's actually a little bit unfair, really, because bear in mind Rory can speak fluent French. Yes. Yeah. So really, he should have had to lip-read in fluent French. Yeah. You've got Rory, right, who is, a, who is a graduate in modern languages from the University of Cambridge, and two professional footballers. <laughs> Cantonar was recently voted Manchester United's greatest asset of all time, just ahead of the gift shop pricing gun. <laughs> <laughs> Take time. 
<laughs> During his career, Cantona has smashed his boot into a teammate's face, been handcuffed after punching an official, has fought with Turkish police and has threatened the ref. One more crime and he'll be flown back here by the sun. <laughs> And at the end of that round, <laughs> David's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. Yeah, we're still in. It's the return of our self-explanatory what's going on round now. David's team, feast your eyes on this England training session. <laughs> Was it after this that, for the first time ever, the words Wisdom and Beckham appeared in the same sentence? <laughs> um, was that the moment, was that the tragic and rather sad moment when David Beckham was introduced to um, Brooklyn's biological father? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just guessing, but I understand that Norman Wisdom did work his way through all the Spice Girls. <laughs> Because he <laughs> is hung like a yak! <laughs> have a look at that bit where he's walking again. Have a look at that bit at the beginning. <laughs> it's like a pendulum. It's pulling it one way or the other. The Albanian thing, wasn't it? Norman's big in Albania. Absolutely right for three points. Yes, well done. <laughs> Yes, that was just prior to England's World Cup qualifier in Albania when Norman Wisdom visited the England training ground. Norman wasn't just at the training session by chance. Sven had hired him to teach Emil Heskey how to fall over more convincingly. <laughs> Gary Steen, take a look at this. That's one of Rory's dreams, huh? <laughs> oh, Cowden Beast versus terrible. Uddersfield. Hey! It's freezing out there. <laughs> I've given an example of the sort of joke he would do. Obviously, I wouldn't choose to do that joke. That but was, Nick, that, that wasn't was... a bad joke, but then you had to go and milk it. <laughs> Come on! Come on. Well, at least I have the bottle. <laughs> Did we see Steve Bull in that clip, maybe? Hey! Anymore. You're all joking, but that clip frightened the life out of me. That was like a frightening vision of the future where cows rule the world. <laughs> Playing football with a giant ball made out of human skin. <laughs> and watch a lovely TV light-hearted sports quiz show like this where everyone on it is a cow. Apart from me, because even in that world I can still get the cow ladies to lactate lovingly. <laughs> Jonathan, did you get the horn? <laughs> but that's what they watch. They think it's all clover. Oh. Hey! We've made a show, we can show before six. <laughs> it's the kids' version. <laughs> I know this because it was during Euro 2000 and we were actually driving to the very game that they were duplicating. It was um, Holland against Italy, semi final, and they were sort of duplicating the match, really. Great for three, three points, points. yeah. 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 I didn't see them, I was the same route. That was filmed during Euro 2000 when Dutch farmers Eric and Caroline Weyer decided to introduce the sport of cow football to the world. It's a lot more boring than ordinary football, but at least you get to find out in advance when rain will stop play. <laughs> <laughs> it's also the only football where the fans shout, who's in all the pies? <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Gary's team have nine points. Oh, okay, okay. Time now for our regulars to get a grip as we play Field the Sportsman. David and Jonathan, you're first this week, if you'd like to take your positions, gentlemen. Last week, this was the uh, time of the show when Chris Eubank tried to impregnate us with something he'd made earlier, wasn't it? So, <laughs> so stay seated, please. <laughs> well, no, you probably you could do it from sitting down, I imagine. Yeah, <laughs> and can we have our first mystery guest, please?
Okay, and your time starts now. <laughs> Midwiff? Yeah. Oh! Excuse me, I think I know what it was. I'm going in again. Cover me! <laughs> Hello? What have you... Just tell me what you found. Give me a clue, cos I've got... I'll tell you what! <laughs> I'm confused now. I'm quite... I am confused. Only my right like... arm's that big. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm confused, but I'm, I'm getting dangerously aroused as well. <laughs> no change there, then. <laughs> I think it's Jordan and one of them slipped up. <laughs> All right. If it's, um, if it's a lead balloon, is this Gary's career? <laughs> She's a big girl. She's strong. Oh, yeah. Is she a lady wrestler? Nope. Well, shot putter, you twat. Shot putter. <laughs> Gary and Rory, please, to your positions. <clears throat> nice shirt. Oh. Hey, sold that. many of those deck chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have our second mystery guest, please? I could find a Guinness now, but... <laughs> and Ralph said, oh, there's David. <laughs> well, OK. Uh, and your time starts now. I felt a huge draft. Was that you opening your mouth, Jonathan? <laughs> well, we take three steps forward very quickly. <laughs> Go on, Sam. Go on, Sam. Jesus, what's this? No, it's not Jesus. <laughs> the bloke having a shit. <laughs> yes, it's Steve Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> I don't obviously. Oh, I, can't tell, I can't tell which end is which. Oh, it's hang on. <laughs> oh. Ah, it's a ski. What do you think? Is it a skier? <laughs> Uh, fast, um, uh, downhill skier. Yeah, Skiing was slow. No, he's on his bloody he's head. He's skier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he just got it. Oh, he, he, he got it. Oh, yeah, Okay, so at the end of that round, David's team have 12 points and Gary's team have 12 points. Yeah. We end it all with a name game, and this week all our names are the names of sports teams from around the world. The leaders oh. goes first, but as it's level, David's team can go first. Ralph, could you pass those along, please? Come on. Thank you, Ralph. Thank Good you luck, Jonathan. Well. 90 seconds, as many names as you can get, Thank starting now. They won the cup at the weekend. They were a oh, football Liverpool. team. Liverpool, Ooh. that's it. That's okay. all they needed. The second one, they were muscular animals known for their huge horns. Sit down, Dion, I'm not Oxen. talking about you. They're, they're, they're living the wild. Yeah. Oxen, and buffalo. No, 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 buffalo. they're muscular. They go up, they're yeah, poachers, like they chop the bit off. They think it's an athlete. Unicorns. They're like unicorns. <laughs> 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 Why not? Why not? Why not? And they come from up north, they're a rhugby league team. And these lead rhinos. rhinos, well done you. Okay, these are my beloved team, the Mighty Potholders. The lovely Stoke. team. That's it, Stoke City, City. well done. Yeah. Okay, this is uh, the bloke who directed the first Beatles movie was Richard. God. You, oh, you are on. so bloody ignorant. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're right, quite it's a yeah. You used to play for them. When you say well, you well, there you go. Well, well, this is well, the first because time. I've branded out most of your career like everyone else in the country. <laughs> <laughs> All right, these, when you're in your garden.
garden, and at night you walk out and you'll often tread on something horrible and slippery. Slow. 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 And the first thing, what do I look like in this suit? What sort of fruit? <laughs> Ridiculous. Go peel on. me, peel banana. me. That's right, there, yeah, banana slugs. <laughs> All right. Uh, first, this is a team, I think they're named after a mustachio dictator. Hitler. No, there's no team called Hitler. <laughs> The other one, Hussein. Saddam Hussein. Yeah, it was Saddam. It's down in football team, I believe that. All right, OK. The first thing, there was a giant monkey, terrorised New York City, took fake rain and to the plural. Kongs. Kongs, the first name, is a bear, pretends he's got one bad eye like Gabrielle. I've just got a terrible feeling that's so not the first time you've worn that suit and gone, peel me, peel me. <laughs> <laughs> you just get that feeling. But no, but seven, we'll win it for you. Oh. Do you want to pass those to Rory, please? Thank you. <laughs> Come, on. Come on. Your time starts now. Ready, um, rugby team, small buzzy things, David's hung like wasps. Wasps, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just relegated a crappy club that you used to play for. Carbon 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 City. Very good. You said you immediately. Yes. Um, oh dear, this is a Finnish basketball team and the first name, somebody who presses their horn a lot is a bit of a... Arsehole. Honker. Honker, yeah, and the second thing is those magazines you used to get when you were a kid. Fino, oh, dandy. <laughs> Playboy. Yeah, Hunker Playboy is very good. Playboy. <laughs> this, oh, this, is, um, this is a Kyrgyzstan football team. You know when you're having a piss in the snow? Yeah. And you think, oh, just draw a little picture. <laughs> We've all that, done it. That is, like, what do you call that? Art. Art. And what you use, you know, instead of a paintbrush? No. Cock. Cock art. <laughs> this is a cycling club. Oh, yeah. shit, I didn't know why. Um, yeah, on, but the first word is, is a small childbirth when, you know, you come out of the sunroof. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is, um, <laughs> Belgrade just have a team called, it's a Let's colour go. and it should, Let's, yeah, Let's but, but they're packages, you send them through the post. Parcels. Parcels, parcels, parcels. This is French for stadium. Stad. Stad. Stad, and this is a cross between mayonnaise and sanitary towels. <laughs> Stad. Stad. Tampon? Tampon. Mayans. Tampon. 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 There's a dog's home there. No. <laughs> what am I going to do about this cycling club business? Yeah. I'm feeling generous. I'm going to let you get away with Cycling Club, which means that the final scores are David's team have 18 and Gary's team have 19. I don't want to lose in an England shirt. Like Nobody you. wants to lose in an England shirt. <laughs> but it's our birthright. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, our thanks to Gary, Rory and Dion, David, Jonathan and Ralph. We're all off to watch the pilot show of Gary's Cow Match of the Day. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Some people are on the pitch. Oh. When invasions were seen as quaint. Later on, we'll bring you the hit. Ooh, it's a riot. And duck. He's throwing a bottle! But before all that, the partridge on UKG2.